Welcome to Mojo Plays, and we watch the Halo TV series so you don't have to. And today, we're breaking down the 10 worst things about the Halo TV series. For a show that's been in production for nearly a decade, and with a budget rivaling some blockbuster films, and one of the deepest wells of lore to pull from in gaming, it's remarkable the production missed the mark this badly. At least we'll always have Neil Blomkamp's shorts to look back on and wonder what could have been. Did you watch the Halo TV series? What are your thoughts on all the new video game related TV series and movies on the way? Let us know down in the comments. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Production Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. Each episode of the series reportedly cost $10 million per episode. You'd think they'd do a better job of- Is that an AK-47 in the year 2552? Production is where the majority of the problems begin and as the long-awaited adaptation of Microsoft's flagship series, you would think the showrunners would have at the very least done their homework. But they instead proudly declared they avoided the games and the majority of the lore that had already been established. From showrunners who clearly aren't fans of the source material, to the fact that 343 signed off on all of this, the show was clearly going to have an uphill battle it didn't need to, with so many of the pieces already there for the team to adapt in a way that could have appealed to both new and old fans, but instead, they chose to please no one. It'll be easier if you let me help. Side characters. Trust me. Trust me. She's a pirate. A good story isn't just about the main characters, but also those around them. And in the case of the Halo series, there is literally not a likable one in the bunch. Some of them, such as Halsey's assistant, are just downright creepy for no reason. And then there are others that had potential, such as Soren, who just becomes a one-note criminal type who's always looking for the next score. And don't even get us started on Quan Ha, who is arguably the worst thing about the series, and that's saying a lot. You're putting us on. You're a traitor! All of you! My dad fought and died so you could all be free. And now you stand and pray and you claim to honor him, but you're all cowards! Yet another cliched, plucky, rebellious teen who thinks she knows better than everyone and just ends up getting people killed in the pursuit of her own agenda. Why are we still constantly subjected to these archetypes that no one has liked for literal generations of storytelling at this point? Even if we win the war against the UNSC, and you don't die, you'll still be out there pumping fuel like the rest of us. Oh, no. I'm fighting for free magical. So was my mother. That's enough! Subplots. You thought you could fill my shoes? Subplots can be a great way to flesh out characters' as backstories and bring much-needed empathy to their journey as the story progresses. None of that happens here. I will look into this personally. Promise you. Thank you, sir. Beyond the tragedy of John's abduction and subsequent recruitment into the Spartan program, which did we really need to spend the majority of the first season on this? None of the subplots, especially Madrigal, which will get its own entry, go anywhere meaningful. Kai's journey of self-discovery is obscenely cliched, with her applying gun grease to her hair supplanting the usual trope of her chopping off her hair, and none of the remaining side characters fare much better. Soren himself has multiple subplots seemingly going all at once, none of which are particularly interesting in any way or make the character even remotely relatable. All of this screams of padding to fill out an episode quota instead of anything actually engaging. What the hell are you doing? Getting my ship going home. Character assassinations. What are you doing? I am on your side. Always, you know that. 
Then why would you let her do this to me? This is where things really start to fall apart narratively. A lot of things can be excused by the showrunners wanting to do their own thing, but if you're going to use beloved and established characters, at least have the decency to do them justice. Take Miranda Keys for example. The TV series Miranda is now a lowly researcher and is almost solely focused on earning mommy's approval, which is a far cry from the badass Miranda Keys who faced down truth and his brutes with dual pistols. And then there's Halsey, who was by and large the villain of the series, and while she was always a morally grey character within Halo canon, the showrunners spent 9 episodes transforming her into the most villainous character with zero redeeming qualities who is willing to sacrifice everyone for her own research. Master Chief is a whole other story we'll get to momentarily. What do you mean? It's in your eyes! What do you mean? You don't understand what you are, do you? Why am I? The Artifact Chief, sit breath. What, what even is this, and why did it take up the entirety of Season 1? The search for the Keystone and the Artifact is the driving force of both the UNSC and the Covenant throughout all 9 episodes of the first season, and by the end, we're not any closer to understanding their relevance beyond a MacGuffin to avoid following the plot of the video games the series is supposed to be based on. No explanation is given as to why only John and the series' original character McKee can activate the relics beyond a need to make them predestined to discover Halo and give him a pointless love interest. Part of what makes the discovery of the original Halo so interesting was the questions surrounding it. But now we have these artifacts that have been repeatedly tested to unlock the mysteries of the Halo without ever even physically setting foot on one. Mickey, send us back. I'm not going back, John. Silver Age Garbage. Silver Team, engage. The showrunners made it very clear this series was not considered part of the official Halo canon, but come on. There's taking liberties with an established property, and then there's just setting it on fire to see how long it will burn. Beyond the fact that apparently the Spartans need inhibitor chips now to control their combat prowess instead of them just being insanely well trained, why did Cortana need to be implanted directly into John? Oh that's right, because he never wears his freaking armor. We already touched on the bastardization of the characters, but it bears repeating again just how little care was given to the series' beloved heroes and heroines in a series that has spanned two decades. There is a lot that has happened over the years. A lot that I am not proud of. Everything to do with Madrigal. My father's dead now. He was killed defending Madrigal because of something you told him. This is the straw that broke the fanboy's back. After the initial introduction of Madrigal, the artifact found there, and the annoyance that is named Quan Ha, there was no discernible reason to revisit either Madrigal or Quan Ha ever again after Chief dropped her off with Soren. And yet, Quan Ha and Magical get nearly 50-50 screen time with the Master Chief. And by the end of the season, there was no reason for it! Absolutely nothing of importance happens on Magical that required so much attention to this Dune Planet ripoff that couldn't have waited for the next season. Why did we need to follow the failed rebellion and Quan Ha doing nothing but getting more people killed while trying to face down a one-note villain on her own? We are given absolutely zero reason to root for her cause beyond the writers telling us that we should. I don't want to fight you, but I will never, never surrender. Master Chief. 20 elite warriors killed, 150 civilians, no survivors. Wait! Correction, one survivor, female, juvenile. When discussing Halo in any capacity, 
Master Chief is absolutely synonymous with the series. A man of few words, but one who rolled a nat 20 on luck, John 117 and his green power armor are the backbone of the series. Which is why what the showrunners have done to him is tantamount to sacrilege. Though Master Chief is still the demon to the Covenant, this is Chief in name alone. After the removal of his emotional inhibitor chip, the showrunners decided to take John on an emotional 180 and become overly irrational, and even committing a war crime by sleeping with an enemy spy he met like 20 minutes ago. Master Chief has always been emotionally stunted more or less, with the exception of Cortana, but the decision to put Chief more in touch with his feelings is just a cliched trope and an insult to such a beloved icon. I may not be able to bring you back. I trust you. Armored Down. In the video games, the Master Chief is an extension of the player, their avatar in the world, and is generally accepted why his face is never seen. Over time, this became something of a running joke with Chief's face always being obscured unless his helmet was on. We already knew we were going to see Chief's face in the TV series, but we didn't think it would be in the first freaking episode. Not only that, but it seems like Chief is against wearing any of his armor at all for the majority of the series. In comparison, The Mandalorian proved you don't need to show the actor's face constantly to tell an effective story. And when we finally did see Din Djarin's face, it felt earned, unlike John removing his helmet every 10 seconds. This is the way. Halo? You know, for a series called Halo, we sure don't see a lot of it. With the showrunner's obsession with the artifacts, not a whole lot of attention was left for the series' namesake as we only see it briefly a handful of times. And even then, it's in more of a dream sequence than actually visiting the ring itself. And even during those brief visits, the Halo is presented more as a paradise than an alien installation. At the very least, our patience with the series could have been rewarded with Master Chief and the UNSC following the covenant to the coordinates that Chief unlocked while in contact with the artifact and left that as the season cliffhanger, but at this rate, we'll be lucky to touch down on the ring by season 5. There's the makings of a decent sci-fi series here, just not a Halo one. John? Is that you? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.